hard way to make a living like this is to teach people a lot. You know, you got liabilities and you got to really, you got to feed them, you got to do all that. And it's hard work for an older person, but it's an easier life to get in with somebody that's doing a lot of filming and whatever. Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. I just want to say something about certain things that bring us into the space age. and The things that have come on the scene recently that play a role in developing survival kits and doing stuff. To me, fire is uh, very important. And the most compact way of carrying fire is these metal rods, a material that when you scrape it, it produces such a hot spark that it'll ignite many fine kindlings. You don't need to use tinder. And a rod like this, which is unusually large, you're probably looking at, I don't know, 10,000 fires or more uh, if you have discovered that you're efficient. The next thing that really impresses me is the Mylar reflective sheet. And recently, in the last year or so, a decent size of mylar, which is a tube tent. It happens that the people who make this, um, the Dollarama people, for two dollars they sell you a mylar tube tent that would cost five dollars to buy those so-called survival blankets that are just too small to be practical. And here you've got a large sheet. And if you take and add a plastic window to this in a certain way, you really have something talk about plastic we have here polyethylene that's kind of a modern material when I came on the scene in the early 60s polyethylene was very uncommon then it became the campers item the the properties of polyethylene do put us into the space age here we might show you how to make a temporary watch base uh, a wash basin for warming water uh, the next two things one is paracord five 50 pound test broken down into fiber as thin as dental floss to something that comes close to use in mountain climbing or whatever paracord the most powerful binding you can ever create because you're lashing everything together pack frames ski shoes you name it stretchers shelters and whatever and using this my basic rule is that when you pack a kit that if there's any room left over, fill it with paracord. And a recent thing that came to my attention is a stronger material in the shape of a ribbon. A ribbon. It says mule tape, 2,500 pound test compared to the 550 pound test. So this is now the material that can be used for winches, snowshoe ties, pack straps, you name it, where it comes to a ribbon-like material plus strength. I would say that these items have a big uh, play, a role to play in compiling survival kits as such. The um, plastic here, when you make a shelter that's absolutely leak-proof, it's called the super shelter. You're using polyethylene as the window. There are clear plastics that make very crinkly sound. Uh, the, you put a turkey in it, put it in the oven, and oven heats don't damage it. That could be used in some ways. Now here is a way that was kind of simple in its, in its rendition, but a lot of people don't know about how easy it is to make a wash basin to, or to melt water in a certain way. So when I take two sticks and put it inside a bag, and I straddle this between two things, you get a considerable uh, dip to collect or to heat water. The, uh, the circumstance here is <laughs> the, uh, you take a rock the size of a chicken's egg, clamp it with a the type of clothes clamp, heat it in the fire, and then hold the rock However, as you pour water in the rock, the hot water collects inside this, this basin, so you've got hot water to wash with, or to shave with, or maybe you might in some way melt snow even that way, sort of thing. 